Gemini 3 is an absolute beast. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean in a minute, but ladies and gentlemen, this is hands down the single biggest update to an AI model that I think that I've seen in quite a while. So just when we thought that we hit a wall with current LLM training, Google is putting the rest of the models to freaking shame. So in this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of legitimately wild applications that you can build with this. Plus, I'm going to dive into the specs and how it crushes the benchmark charts. So let's just jump into it. Now, for today's testing, I'm primarily using Gemini 3 on the main Gemini platform. This is rolling out to everybody as we speak. Just make sure that you are on the thinking mode because that is where the Gemini 3 Pro model is. I'm going to show you all of that in just a second. And just remember that every model, of course, can write a poem. It can summarize an email. But we're not here for that. I'm here to break this thing. I'm here to make it cry. I'm here to give it the hardest prompts that I could think of. And due to the hype, I have some pretty high expectations. So let's get started all right so let's just start out with a pretty big coding challenge right out of the gate so to start we are going to have it create a clone of the mac os sequoia desktop we're going to have it use the original wallpaper we're going to have it include working doc with bouncing animations we want a pages app a notes app safari system settings we want the works and then we're going to have it put everything into a standalone html file so that it is all self-contained um, of course i'm going to select canvas so that we can see it working as it's working and we're going to of course click uh, thinking because that's where the three pro is and we are just going to get cracking all right, so let's just see what it is doing here in Canvas. So it's looking like it's got all the things where it's working on the bouncing animation. It's going to build the applications within a browser. So it's going to figure out how to do that. It's pretty cool. So yeah, let's. so we've got ourselves the HTML. So I'm just going to copy this. All right, so let's see what it did here. It looks like this is a Mac OS uh, home screen or whatever. And we've got ourselves our Safari right here. Okay, we've got Wikipedia straight away. Can we search? Uh, let's try Google.com, I guess. Uh, Google.com is not working. Let's see. Let's try YouTube. That'd be wild. YouTube's not working. Is Wikipedia the only one that works? Wikipedia.com. Oh, Wikipedia.com works. That's pretty wild. And let's try... Mm, let's just try about Google. All right, so that's pretty cool. And what about Notes app? All right, if we can add a note here. Grocery list. Can we make it bold? Yes. Damn, look at all that. And then we can add a new one. We can just add a bunch. Not bad. Can we delete it? Uh, it doesn't look like we can delete it. Okay. And what about pages? Okay, we go. Oh, that's cool. We can center it. We can't put it to the right, <laughs> but we can put it to the left. Take it back now, y'all. And we can, uh, yeah, we can just do the same thing pretty much. But I mean, that's pretty cool. I doubt you can. I mean, yeah, you don't get the search bar up here. But I mean, still, for a one shot prompt, that's not bad. It's pretty cool. I mean, I'm impressed. I, I will say that I'm impressed. I don't think that you can do this with Claude, not even close. But um, yeah, so Claude is shaking in its boots right now. Let's uh, let's move on to a, another one. All right, so Gemini 3 is multimodal, so let's just test its visual logic engine. So I'm going to feed it a picture of a cat that's hiding. Um, let's just take a look at it here. It's a super camouflage picture. I mean, can you find the cat? I feel like you probably can't find the cat. So let's just ask AI if it can find the cat. And if it can then amazing good job ai all right so we've got it it says the cat is located almost exactly in the center of the image here's how to spot it look at the middle of the photograph scan for a small patch of orange and white and the cat is crouching or walking in a furrow of the plowed dirt its orange fur is blending perfectly with the reddish brown soil all right so middle of the photograph and small patch of orange and white so let's just open this and let's see Middle of the photograph, a small patch of orange. Oh, is that it? <laughs> to be honest, I haven't been able to find it. Yeah, I guess that's the cat, isn't it? All right. Let me see. Let's, let's pull up the original image and see if that's what it is. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at that little guy. All right. Wow. Cool. 
All right, let's go back to coding. Um, I think that this next one is going to be brutal. I think that it did pretty well on the Mac one, so let's see if it can create an Adobe Premiere Pro. I want to include a timeline with multiple tracks. I wanted to have a preview window of a trimming tool and the ability to add text overlays. We're going to want, obviously, a dark UI because that's sick. And again, put it in an HTML file. We're on three. I got Canvas, and let's go. All right, so as it's running, let's check out Canvas. So it's focusing on the building blocks. Okay, multi-track capabilities, integrating text overlays and dark UI. Trimming tool is getting attention. That's it. Oh, that's good. That's what I asked for. And all right, it's going to decide to abandon the real video processing. is too, too complex. Instead, it's just going to build a virtual timeline. Okay, not sure what that's going to look like. It uses a hidden video element to provide the underlying timing. All right, let's see. Refining timeline. Okay, fully immersive. Let's just see. I think it's done. So, I mean, looks like it did some stuff. So I'll copy this and I'll come back when I have it. All right, so here is what we've got. We've got, it's pretty snazzy, to be honest. So you launch the editor. Okay, looks like we've got import video up here. We've got a play button. We've got a cutting tool and a selection tool. So let's just import a video. I got this one to be ready. This is like the Google Gemini uh, preview from Google. So it's right here. And we're just going to press add, I guess. Let's see if it, oh, look at that, it plays. That's pretty cool. Can we skip ahead? Yep. All right, that's really loud. And now let's see if we can cut it. Uh, let's see. Oh, you can cut it. Not bad. Let's try this. Uh, yeah, all right, so you, you can only drag it on this one track, but that's still pretty impressive. Let's see if it actually changes it, though. No, it doesn't. So it still just plays the video going on through, but it's got the cutting animation, I guess. So this would probably need to be worked on. And you can't drag it from the end either, but still, I mean, can you delete this? You can delete that. And does it just keep going? Like, what if I delete all of them, except for this little one? Is it just going to play? I don't know. Well, look at that. At least it cuts that off. <laughs> all right, that's pretty cool. Damn. All right, let's just try one more. And I think that I have enough prompts for this, but we'll see. Uh, let's just do a geolocation one. I want to give it a picture of some random subway station. This one is in Germany, I believe. And it's just going to hopefully um, tell me exactly where it is. So if it can do that, then kudos. All right, so as it's going, let's see what it's thinking about. So it's identifying critical, likely German, okay. The yellow guide rail immediately suggests Berlin U-Bahn system, okay, wow. The graffiti, a significant find is a tower or spire rising from the station roof. This is a key identifier, exposed wooden beams under the eaves further to find the structure. I'm also noticing a masked person in the scene. <laughs> that person looks German as hell, man, which helps with the timeline, but not the location. All right, so I'm Ross referencing, all right, Berlin U-Bahn, blah, blah, blah. Dang, look at that. Look at this. I don't know if you can see this tab. Yes, you can. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. All right, let's see. Let's see if it uh is done. The sliced, sliced, whatever U-Bahn station in Germany. Damn, dude, how how does it do that? Ah, uh, and damn, look at this. Is the entrance is a? It tells you where the entrance is. The intersection of this and this, whatever that is. Passengers enter at street level. All right, that's crazy, man. Okay, for real this time, this one is going to be the last one. And we are going to just see, since it can see images, we're going to see if we can drag a 2D architectural floor plan. And it's just going to be black and white sketch. I'll show you what it looks like right here. Uh, it's pretty dang big. Let's just make that smaller. So we're just going to have it uh, make this into a 3D interactive walkthrough using 3JS. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you can do it. Let's um, drag it in and let's get this prompt in there so that it knows what it's doing. And then let's just click submit. All right, let's just see what it's thinking about as it's going in. So it's examining the image, planning the 3D scene, includes hard coding representative floor plan. Standard 3JS geometries, textures, and controls. 
The walls will be box geometries. Floors will be planes. Okay. You can see all the code that it's running right here in the preview. And it's broken it into a bunch of different parts. That's great. And finding the visuals. All right. Let's, oh, there we go. Click to start. Oh, there's a, there's a problem. So let's fix that. Okay, so it fixed the error by adding an import map. I trust you, dude. Oh, mouse is looking around. Unfortunately, I can't move. Maybe, let's just fix this right now. I can't move. Uh, it looks like I was stuck inside of a wall. Let's click it. Let's start it. And, oh, look at that. I can move. <laughs> and, I mean, I think that this is actually pretty close. I mean, let, let me just, let me just pull up the map right here damn that's huge all right let's let's put this right here as we walk through it eh ah damn it <laughs> i can't see it anymore let's put it here and then make this i don't know how i can do that let's just i think that it looks it looks about right to me well i bet we could add some tables and chairs and make this place look kind of nice put a little fireplace in here this place could be home if we really wanted to but anyway yeah no, i think that uh, i think that it kind of crushed this one i mean it, it did take a few but for the rest of them, it's been one shot pretty much the whole time. This time I spawned inside of a wall, so that's not great. Um, but, I mean, if it hadn't spawned me inside of a wall, then you're looking at a pretty ideal uh, one-shot prompt right here. So that's pretty cool. And it knew exactly where that train station was, which is still blowing my mind for some reason. And uh, real quickly on the specs, we are still looking at the 1 million token context window. Uh, this is going to be obviously standard now, but Gemini is filling that with much higher accuracy. So you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck, if you will. And in terms of benchmarks, you can just look at this chart right here for humanity's last exam. Gemini 3 is hitting 37%, which is leaving Claude and GPT to eat its boots. And uh, the real story, of course, is Arc AGI 2. This is the visual reasoning test that usually breaks AI. Gemini 3 scored uh, 31%. That might sound low, but the previous record was like 8%. So it is actually learning new patterns that it hasn't seen before, and it is uh, miles ahead on the GBQA diamond set for science as well. And if we look at the live bench leaderboard, Gemini 3 Pro is sitting at number one. It's tight competition with, Ch with ChatGPT 5.1 high, but uh, Gemini's coding capabilities are edging it out for sure. So let me know in the comments below, does this excite you? Are you going to use this to start building your stuff? Or does this just feel like a smaller step up and I'm just going crazy here, losing my mind over AI magic? If you want to keep up with this insanity, do make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm breaking down all the tools and all the updates that actually matter so that you don't drown out in all the hype so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video